Chapter 8. Ming's attack on Baron's kingdom prompts Zarkov to perfect an N-ray to be discharged from a powerful Nulitrian to neutralize and render useless Ming's power plant. Baron tells Flash the Nulitrian can best be directed against Ming's palace from the Devil's Dome in the Land of the Dead. Ming learns of their plans, and his soldiers plant a powerful time bomb on the Devil's Dome, but are promptly captured by Rockmen. Flash and his party land unaware of the bomb and the Rockmen who are watching them. And... Look, the Earthmen, they're right near where we laid the mine. This is the place. It isn't so far from the ship. And there are plenty of caves to take shelter in. We won't have any trouble getting our equipment in here. Take him someplace for burial, perhaps. What's this all about? Maybe some kind of a ceremony. See if they're dead. Look, they're reviving. trying to say he wants to know who we are and where we came from what language is it it's an ancient language spoken by the lost tribes that once inhabited the gobi desert on earth we're going to be taken to the king so why are we prisoners Darko? i think they're blaming us for that explosion well, we shouldn't be held responsible for that Mark, why are you monster if it doesn't see us. Call it in the bomb pin. Even the blast of its breath is deadly poison. He says the reason they dress like rocks is to protect themselves against these monsters. No 
wonder they call this place the land of the dead. What are they saying? Seems they're blaming us for the disappearance of the king's son. But they can't do that. We had nothing. The king's son has failed to return since the explosion, which apparently caused a serious earthquake and did a lot of damage. But suppose his son doesn't show up. In that case, our lives will be forfeit. Oh, but that's not right. Torch caused the explosion. So you better try and make that clear to them, Zappa. Nefra. Ew. He's coming to. What happened? What have they done with Dale? Dale was sent to another cell along with Zonia. We're all to be kept under guard and the search is over. Search? What search? The search to find the Rock King's missing son. Remember? That's what all the trouble is about. That's right. I remember now. You know, it's funny. None of us suspected this part of Mongo was inhabited. Where do these people originate from? I can only account for them as being descended from the original race, which thousands of years ago inhabited numerous planets on the solar system. They're primitive, all right. Yeah. They have no science. Think there's a chance to smash through? Not by force alone. We'll have to work out some other plan. the activities of Flesh, Gordon, and Dr. Zarkov. I have been trying to do so, sire. And be prepared in case Torch failed to stop them. Yes. I'll take that instrument, if you please. Give it to me. What instrument? A shortwave radio you were trying to call your friend the emergency upon. Why, you... <laughs> you can't find out what this is all about. Calling the emergency at Ming's Palace. Dale Arden calling the emergency. Flash Garden and Professor Zarko want to thank you for your valuable assistance in fighting Ming. But we're in serious trouble and need help. This is urgent. We need help. Answer, please, help. So, Zarkov learned all my secrets from you. You traitor. Why shouldn't I be a traitor to you? After the way you've treated my people, lock him up. I have decided the manner in which he is to die. Take him away. No, you 
You better let me do it. You two will know better how to get help when you do get out of here. All right. I wouldn't let you do it if we didn't think it'd work. Ready? Got to try and find Ronald and Prince Baron. Yes. If we can locate the ship, it should be somewhere in that direction. Where's Flash and Professor Zarkov? We tricked the guards. They've gone for help. And there's a chance for us. I certainly hope so. Yeah, we 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 we. a strong gravity pull from the left of us? Yes. It's like some powerful magnetic force. What is that? I don't know. Let's find out. That magnetic pull is getting stronger than ever. Then it's true. This part of Mongo is made up of highly magnetized particles. Oh! Up there. Trapped up there when the explosion opened the ground and exposed the roadstone. Got to save him, Zarkov. It's the only way to make the king call off the execution. Look, that lodestone is balanced on the slender pinnacle. If I could get one of those big rocks above started, it would knock the lodestone into the depths of the planet. Too dangerous. That's the only chance to save Dale and the others. Zarkov, go on back to the cave. Tell the king we found his son. Good luck, Flash. Good luck.
Skull, hey, boo. It's Ava, your internet girlfriend. Skull. Tonight, we're diving into a real spine tingler from the vaults. Asterisk the screaming skull asterisk. Now, I know we're all about the jump scares and ghostly thrills, but this one's got an extra creepy vibe that'll stick with you. This 1958 classic isn't just your regular ghost story. It's a psychological thrill ride that gets you wondering who or what is haunting our leading lady or if it's all in her head. Face screaming in fear skull. Our story follows newlyweds Eric and Jenny, who move into Eric's spooky, secluded mansion. Perfect setting for a haunting, am I right? As soon as they settle in, poor Jenny's tormented by a mysterious, shrieking skull, one that seems to have a life of its own. And the plot thickens. The skull might belong to Eric's first wife, who died under, let's just say, suspicious circumstances. Grimacing face ring ghost. So grab your popcorn, dim the lights, and let's see if you can survive the night with the screaming skull. Spoiler alert, you may want to keep the lights on for this one. Candle. The Screaming Skull is a motion picture that reaches its climax in shocking horror. Its impact is so terrifying that it may have an unforeseen effect. It may kill you. Therefore, its producers feel they must assure free burial services to anyone who dies of fright while seeing The Screaming Skull. Welcome, Mrs. Whitlock. Lovely, Eric. You look disappointed for a moment. I did not. It's really lovely. Oh, look! <laughs> I 
that that's the den there. That's right. Is that a bedroom? Yes, it is. Gonna be ours? You'll need some fixing first. It was her room, was it? Yes. Come on along, I'll share the rest of the house. Forbidding now, I suppose, empty like this. But it was usually this way. Shortly after Marion and I were married, she removed all the furniture her parents had left her. This is our home, she used to say. And we must choose everything carefully. Well, we didn't get very far before she died. But now that you're here, it's going to be lovely again. I'll get the things out of storage tomorrow. We're all town at the warehouse. And I'll take care of that, too. You have candles? Sure. It'll be twice as romantic. Speaking of being romantic... I got to carry you over the threshold. died out for me. What's that up there? Oh, that's where Mickey keeps his gardening things. Who's Mickey? The gardener. He's kept it up the two years I've been away. All by himself? That's right. He must work awfully hard. Oh, he and Marion would spend hours on end working here in the gardens and up in the greenhouse back there. See, he loved her very much. Sometimes I used to wonder who she was, my wife or Mickey's nursemaid. You know, I don't think he quite believes she's gone. I think he expects her to show up one of these mornings and scold her for neglecting the gardens. You still love her, don't you? No, I'm not jealous. I'm grateful to her. I think to have loved once, really loved, to learn how to love always. Learning it from her, you give again to me. I wish there was some way to thank her. Who's that? I don't know. They're driving around the back. Come on, come on along. Eric! I see Eric. Oh. Please stop by to meet your new wife. <laughs> oh, Eric, this is a <laughs> wonderful surprise. It's been a long time. It has. Reverend? Good to see you, Eric. Jenny, this is Mrs. Snow. I'm very happy to meet you. Jenny, this is a lovely surprise. And the Reverend Mr. Snow. Hello, my dear. Oh, she's sweet, Eric. I know. I happened to be going into town. I ran into Mr. Maurer. He told me you were getting back today. And we thought we'd just drop by and bring you something for your dinner. Oh, nice. Well, well it'll save you all the bother of shopping while you're trying to get settled. Well, then why don't you stay for dinner? Oh, no, not tonight. Oh, no, no, we wouldn't think of that. Oh, now, please say yes. I'd like for you to. It would be like old times. All right, on the condition that I do the cooking. You don't have to. You know, I know that, but I'd love to. Well, there's Mickey. Excuse me, honey. Mickey! Ah, poor Mickey. He keeps this place up like a shrine. Eric told me how he loved Marion. Mickey's father was a gardener here when Marion's mother was alive. Mickey and Marion grew up together here. Jenny? This is Mickey. How do you do, Mickey? I hope we'll be good friends. Well, Mickey. Thank you. 
Thank you, Mickey. Well, shall we all go inside? That's a good idea. Mickey, remember you promised me some of those rose cuttings. Nice seeing you again, Mickey. I'm going to have to get you down to the barber shop one day very soon. Excuse us, Mickey. Too bad, Eric. Jenny, I hope you have more luck in getting your husband to mine than I've had with mine. You know, you've got to admit it does make the room look better. Well, very well, Tyson. For penance, you can come and help me with dinner. Now, come on. Edward, you keep Jenny company? Yes, dear. She wonderful? Yes, she's not at all like Marion, and I think that's for the best. You know, so many men, when they lose a wife, they try so hard to deny the loss they marry someone exactly like the first wife. It hardly seems fair using the living to bring back the dead, does it? No, I suppose it doesn't. We make a prison for ourselves out of the past, at least our sentimental wished for pasts. Mrs. Snow. Yes, dear. There's something I must tell you and the Reverend. Well, of course, Eric. What is it? You see, Jenny has not had a very happy past. Oh? And talking about it or about something that might strongly remind her of it, she's very impressionable. Is there something wrong, Eric? No, not really. You see, she lost her parents many years ago in a very tragic way. And talking about unhappy past only... She's very impressionable. See, I want her to be happy, Mrs. Snow. Of course you do, and so do we all. Now, how did she lose them? Well, look, I'm not crying, dear. It's just that Mr. Snow and I can help better if we know something about it. They drowned in an accident. Jenny saw it all. Who's Mr. Maurer? Mr. Maurer? Why, oh, he's a lawyer in town. I thought no one knew we were coming. You said you heard from Mr. Maurer? Why, well, Eric wrote him. He takes care of the estate or what's left of it. Oh, that's right. Eric has to see him tomorrow. Well, Eric's co-executor of the estate, along with Mr. Maurer. You see, Marion's death was so sudden that, well, all that was left to Eric was the house and these grounds. Mr. Maurer told me that Eric had found someone very sweet and very kind, and with whom he was very much in love. He didn't say enough. How did Marion die? Didn't Eric tell you? I think the subject's rather painful to him. I'd like to make him talk about it. Would you mind telling me? I'd like to know. It was a rainy day. She and Mickey had been working up there in the greenhouse. She left him to go back to the house for a few minutes. The way we pieced it together after the accident is that while she was coming down this path, apparently it began to rain very hard. She must have run along here. We don't know, of course, what happened then. Perhaps she slipped on a leaf. The base of her skull was smashed. It was thought that she hit her head on the edge of the cement wall where we're sitting. And she fell in there. She died in the water. That's where Eric found her ten minutes later. Marion. 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 You said... 
said, you said, Mickey, wait here. I'm going down to the house for just a minute. Wait here, Mickey, you said. And then you went away in the rain. And you didn't come back to play. Man, what? And don't forget that you and Eric are coming for lunch day after tomorrow. We'll do better than that. We'll come to church on Sunday as well. Oh, getting Eric to church is like moving a mountain. He'll come. Come along, my dear. It's getting late. Eric, thank you very much for bringing Jenny into our lives. Thank you for the dinner. It was a pleasure. Good night. Good night. Good night. Did you know that Jenny's very wealthy? Oh, yes. Mr. Ma told me in town today. Well, she's not at all like Marion, you know? She's so gentle and timid, as if... as if she were afraid of something. I knew you'd like my friends, dear. What's this? Huh? Just happy, that's all. Oh, come. So happy. Come on. Over. Interesting. Mm -hmm. It's called Beast in the Jungle. It's all about a man who waited all of his life for something great, wonderful to happen to him. He had only one good friend. It's a woman whom he confided. And she died. At her grave, he suddenly realized that she was the great and wonderful thing that he'd waited for all of his life. But it was too late then. His memories, like a beast in the jungle, rise up out of the past, overwhelm him. Oh, poor fellow. He doesn't know what he missed.
don't think Mickey looks for her in the pond. Jenny, now stop it. I can't help it, Eric. That bad feeling's come back. I've forbidden you to talk about it. She looked like that, Eric. My mother looked like that. Jenny, Jenny. I can't help it, Eric. Darling, you're just talking yourself into those same old fears. I've got to talk about it, Eric. I have to talk about I it. I forbid you to talk about it now. What? Just that with you beside me, I'm alive again. I don't want to be sick anymore. Honey, look. Now, you mustn't go on thinking like this. Besides, how could a very poorly done self-portrait upset you so much? I know it's only my own fear. It's my own guilt that I can't get away from. Eric, I'm sorry. Oh, I want you to listen to me. And I want you to believe me. Now, you were sick once, yes, but you were cured. Mickey caused this. You may as well know. He does look for Marion night after night down by that pond. And he probably comes here afterwards. I'm going to speak to Mickey in the morning. Now, don't you see? Now, simply, it's all explained away. But if I also heard a scream, Eric, before when I went to the hospital, I was hearing things. I'm hearing them again. What did you hear? It was a high, strange scream. High, strange scream. Like a peacock's cry? What's that sound like? Come here. Sound like that? You see? It's all very, very real. Such a fool. Feeling better now? be bothered with any of Mickey's nightly visits anymore. I've forbidden him to come into the house. Well, I was just nervous last night. I wish you wouldn't take it out on Mickey. Now, he's a child. He must be disciplined. I'd like him to feel I'm his friend. Why don't you do some gardening with him while I'm in town? If he sees you're interested, you win him over quickly enough. Wait a minute. list staples mostly. Oh. Are you sure you don't want to come in with me? You get more done without me. Got to see about the lights, the phone, the bank, and the warehouse people about that furniture. You know, that cop's just about broken my back. Yeah, don't forget to see Mr. Mauer. I have to see him this evening. It's a bore, but I'll have to see him. Will you be home in time for dinner? I'll wait for you. No, if I'm not, don't you worry, darling. Getting out of Mauer's clutches sometimes requires an act of God. I love you. Hello, Mickey. Look out. You almost cut him. He's a handsome one, isn't he? So cuddly and warm. When I was a little girl, I used to want to be a caterpillar. So I was a very little girl. There you go. Marion must have loved her gardens. We'll keep them lovely for her always. You know what I'd like to do, Mickey? 
I'd like to pick some of the nicest flowers and take them to her. Would you like that? Yes. Eric told me she was near here. Would you show me where? I'm sure it was a great loss to all of you, Mickey. She cries. She cries? In the night. Dead people don't cry, Mickey. I heard her. Heard her? Skull Ava's Midnight Check-In. Skull. Hey, you. Yeah, you. How are you holding up over there? The screaming skull got you biting your nails yet? Or maybe you're secretly wishing you had someone to hide behind. Go Skull, don't worry. I'm right here to keep you company through all the skull shrieking and ghostly chaos. Seriously, though, are we all seeing this? Poor Jenny's getting one creepy mind game after another, and I can't tell if it's all in her head or if that house is out to get her. Face screaming in fear, Blackheart. Tell me, how's your horror stamina? Still going strong? Or are you ready to make a run for it? Because if you're feeling spooked, just know I'm here, right on the other side of the screen. Just remember, it's only a movie, or is it? Smirking face, keep your eyes open, loves. Because with a screaming skull, anything could happen. Skull sparkles. I don't think he quite expects she's gone. She cries. She cries in the night. I think he expects her to show up one of these mornings. She died in the water. The base of her skull was smashed. She didn't want to die. She died in the water.
Jenny, 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 honey, honey. It's all right, darling. It's all right. I'm right here. I'm right here. Just lie back. That's right. Just lie back. It's all right. And you found me. What else was there? What do you mean, what else? A skull? Jenny. I know there was no skull. Mickey says Marion cries at night. Why, that child is stupid. Don't blame him. We both hear the peacock. He, out of his love for Marion, wishes to cry to be from her. I, out of my sickness. Now, darling, we've been all through that nonsense last night. Don't you see? I've never imagined seeing these things before. To just stand there and see it. Never turn out to be nothing. Eric? I want you to call Dr. Rand tomorrow in New York. I want you to take me back. No, Jenny. Now, it may sound selfish. You see, having you to love, I'm happy too. I don't want to lose that. Now in the morning, Mr. Snow will be here and we'll tell him. He's very comforting. And I think he'll agree with me. About what? I think it's Mickey. You see, he hated me from the first. Marion was his friend and when I married her, he thought I was taking her away from him. Now that she's dead, taken away from him forever, I suppose in a childish mind of his, I'm responsible for that. 
And now, because you're my wife, and in Marion's house, he hates you, too. I don't think Mickey's responsible. He's not quick enough or clever enough. And who? Myself. It's all in my own mind. We do need somebody else, darling. We need somebody outside of the confusions of our love for each other. Now, the Reverend Snow will be here in the morning. Who's in there? Well, this much is real anyway. Look here, Jenny. You see, this is how you gouged your hand. You say you threw the skull down here where Eric is looking? Yes. Did you find anything, Eric? Nothing yet. Surely, Jenny, you must agree with me that anything as fragile as a skull would have been smashed to bits down there. And Eric has found nothing. And to assume that the skull would move of its own all the way from there to the driveway door. Now, now Jenny, there's no reason for that. Don't you see, I agree with you. Did Eric tell you I spent over a year in the sanitarium? Oh, Eric told Mrs. Snow that you were very impressionable, but that's all. I know lots of people needing a rest go to sanitariums. This wasn't quite that kind of sanitarium. You see, I grew up loving my father and hating my mother. Well, she never knew it. Something I kept to myself. She was very beautiful. Very gay, like her, very much. And I knew she resented that I was not more like her. I used to lie awake at night and wish she were dead. Well, that isn't very unusual. I understand many children go through such a period. I was no longer a child. And one day, I got my wish. They were both drowned. I could still hear her scream. I was all alone on a little beach. And all I could see was the overturned boat on the top of the waves. And I kept trying to reach them. And the waves kept throwing me back. And then hear her cries no more. And then hours later, the men came and searched for the bodies. They were never found. That's when this bad feeling started, this feeling that if I'd really wanted to, I could have saved them, but I didn't. That I really killed them. You tried your very best. I did. But thinking and begging and praying couldn't make this feeling go away. That's when they took me to the hospital. They told me I was cured. Jenny. They told me I was cured. You go on. I'll be there in time for lunch. But where do you think he's gone off to, Eric? Who knows about Mickey? He might be hiding. Have you looked at Marion's grave?
Becky. 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 Find him. No. Where's Jenny? She's with Mrs. Snow on the patio. Eric, I think I should tell you that Jenny has confided in me about the sanitarium. Oh. Does your wife know? I told her Jenny was impressionable, but not that. I haven't said a word to her. Mr. Snow, you can do both Jenny and me a great favor by forgetting she ever told you that. But, Eric, if it helps explain... It explains nothing. If I were you, Eric... I take her away. If she's so impressionable and that house frightens her so much, why subject her to it? Look, I can't do a thing like that. It'd be the worst thing for her. Mr. Snow, it would be admitting she was sick again. I want her to be happy. We'll stay here. Perhaps you know best, Eric. See, I've got a simple and old-fashioned piece of philosophy. The only cure for her fear is to teach her she's loved. I mean, really loved. And I love her so much. God bless you for that, Eric. She's a very fortunate woman having someone like you to care for her. Be night soon. Oh, Jenny, Jenny. I'm sorry. Darling, you've got to believe it will not happen again. Ever. Mickey! Mickey! Eric! that skull. Stop it. It wasn't his fault. Where did she get it? Leave him alone. I'll take care of this, Jenny. Now, I know you don't like me, Mickey. I know you're doing anything to get us to leave here. This idiotic attempt to scare us as if we were children. It was you, wasn't it? Wasn't it? No, not me. Not me. Uh, get out of here. Get out of here. Come on. I wish you'd apologize to him. You know as well as I do, it's not his fault. It's all in my own mind. Jenny, I'm going to do something. And you're going to help me do it. What's that? That portrait upstairs. It reminds you of your mother. Yes. You were fine until you saw it. Now it has you all preoccupied with memories of the past. We're going to burn it. Precious to you, Eric. The picture means nothing to me. I want you to be happy. We can't be until this fear is out of our lives. All right, Jenny. Go on, Jenny. Those ashes stand overnight. 
And the brush in these hills is a regular tinderbox. You want to help me? Are you feeling better? As if I destroyed her with my own hands. She'll come back and... She'll come back. Darling, if you go on talking that way, you destroy the whole purpose. Now, the thing is out of the house, and it's over. You just give it half a chance, and you'll begin to forget it. And if you'll just spread those ashes out a little for me, I'll get the water to it. That's it. There's no skull there, darling. There is no skull there, Jenny. Darling, there's no skull there. There's no skull. Are you going to be able to catch a plane tonight? When we get into town, I will call Mr. Maurer. He'll arrange a midnight plane. I thought there'd be more time. Time for so many wonderful things. It's going to be all right. Of course. It's just me. It's going to be all right. Good evening, my dear. Hello. Mrs. Snow's hen thought you might like some fresh eggs for your breakfast in the morning. Hello, Eric. This is a surprise. Those hens labored mightily, as you can see. Fine, I'll take them. You'll excuse me, dear. Of course. What is it, Eric? I've got to take Jenny away. The hospital she was in before. It happened again? I thought it would help her if we got rid of that portrait. You know the one? Yes. Well, we burned it. She saw a skull in the ashes. You were there? I saw nothing, of course. Of course. And I thought it was Mickey. But when I was there myself and I saw... Her, Mr. Snow, there's something I've never told you. I've never told anybody. When Jenny was put away in that hospital, she tried to do away with herself. I'm terribly afraid. You think she might try it again? I know she will, unless I get her back to that hospital. When are you going? Tonight. We shall miss you. Mrs. Snow and I have grown very fond of Jenny. Yes, and she of you. I don't suppose you'll be coming back here again, Eric? No. Never. I'll miss him and his wife. He's very kind. Yes. When I said goodbye to him just now, he tried to talk me out of what I saw. Oh. He said he thought the skull was real. 
going to bring some men in the morning to search the estate. Where? Everywhere. He was just talking, trying to be kind. I suppose. I'll go upstairs and pack. You want to come with me? I'll be up in a minute. Show me, put it in the pond. You must have. Where is it? I don't know. I don't know. Don't lie to me. Don't lie to me. I don't Where is it? I don't know. Tell me the truth. You took it. Tell me. Tell me. Tell me. Didn't take it. Didn't take it. Who? Who? Not me. Not me. Who? Mary. Mary took it. Mary took it. Mary. Where did you find this? In pond. Well, who put it there? He did. Eric? He did. Then there was a skull. But Eric said that he didn't see it when Jenny saw it. I know. Oh, but why should Eric lie like that? Mickey, those other times with the skull, did you do it? No. Mickey, you've never lied to me before. Lying is a sin. You understand that? You must not lie to me now. Did you do it, Mickey, all those other times? No. I simply do not understand that. If it wasn't, Mickey. And it wasn't her imagination. But why would Eric do such a thing? I don't know. I just don't know. Well, what do you think we should do about it? We're going back there, to that house.
Mickey? Eric and I are leaving, Mickey. I'd like to say goodbye. I'd like to leave as your friend, Mickey. Mickey?
Jenny, are you all right? Oh, Jenny. Eric. Eric tried. Shh. Oh, Where I is Eric? Don't, don't. I don't know. I don't know. I'll find him. That's all right. Edward, now be careful. Did he do it? Your money. The question is now, did Marion die in an accident? I suppose we'll never know. I just wanted to pop in and say a huge thank you for sticking it out with me through the screaming skull. Clapperboard Skull, you all made this night of chills and thrills one to remember. And let's be real, having you here to scream with made it so much more fun. Nothing says bonding like a haunted mansion, a screaming ghost skull, and a whole lot of what is happening moments, right? Ghost face screaming in fear. So whether you kept the lights on, hid behind a pillow, or laughed through the creepy parts, just know I loved every second of it. Let's do it again soon, same time, same screams. Skull sparkles until next time, my brave horror buddies. Sweet, haunted dreams, smirking face black heart.